Hello again, we're doing the rational zero theorem. And it's the same exact problem, uh, f of x equals x cubed plus 7x squared minus 36. And basically what we had determined was that there's one real positive zero using Descartes' rules of signs, uh, two or zero real negative zeros. I don't actually know. And then um, two or zero imaginary zeros. It, it has to add up to three, so it could be one, two, two, or it could be one, zero, two. Actually, I should probably write that as... 0 or 2. Because if it's 1, 2, then it's 0 imaginary, and if it's 1, 0, then it's 2 there. Anyways, that was a mistake I should have probably caught, but I didn't. So, moving on. Uh, basically, the Cliff Notes version of the rational zero theorem is that you write this in uh, descending order, from highest degree to lowest degree. And what you do is you take uh, the coefficient, I'm uh, sorry, the constant of the last term, and you divide it by the uh, coefficient of the first term. That's pretty much all there is to it, but uh, let me just explain that really quickly. And it's very easy in this case because the uh, uh, number in front of x happens to be a 1. But basically what you do is you write all the factors of each uh, number. So this is a 1. The factors of 1 are either plus 1 or negative 1. And I want to save some room, actually. Plus or minus 1. So that's what we're working with. For negative 36, or I actually should say for 36, it could be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, because these all go into 36, uh, plus or minus 4, fortunately 5 doesn't go in, uh, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 12, plus or minus 18, plus or minus 36. So basically what that means is, uh, I don't know how many negative numbers exist in here, but I do know that one positive number exists for sure. And then imaginary I'm going to figure out later, if, there, if it applies. So what I have to do is I have to take these numbers and divide it by all of these in order to figure out the answer. But since this is plus or minus 1, it's arbitrary. Uh, let me say this again, like I have to take the blues and divide it by the browns. Uh, well, all of them are going to be divided by plus or minus 1, so that doesn't really matter. Now, if, the, if this was a plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, then I'd have to do 1, uh, negative 1, positive 1, 1 half, negative 1 half, etc. But all I've really got to do here is I say, okay, 1 divided by 1, ooh, it's 1. Uh, negative 1 divided by 1, negative 1. It doesn't matter, since I'm dividing, or, uh, dividing by plus or minus 1, I've already got all my answers here. But basically, you take this term's roots, and you divide by this term's roots. And this one's called P. And this one's called Q in our rational zero theorem. And basically, in order to figure out all our possibilities, you take P over Q. Fortunately, in this problem, since it's only plus or minus 1, I've already got all my answers here. Now, I'm going to test only the positive numbers right now. There's a reason why I'm going to do that. Because I know that there's one real positive zero, which means one of these numbers has to work. I don't know if the negative numbers will work. It could be 2 or it could be 0. Um, one uh, precautionary tale is, besides testing these uh, positive numbers and the negative numbers, test the number 0 because it's not actually accounted for. So we'll do that really quickly. 0 cubed plus 7 times 0 squared minus 36 is negative 36. What I want to do is I want to see if it equals 0. It didn't. It equaled negative 36. So 0 doesn't work. Finito. I don't have to check that. So what I'm going to do really quickly is check them, and I'm going to do it in my head. Uh, hopefully that will be uh, not too bad to follow, but usually I would write it out. Okay, I want to check f of 1, so I plug in a 1 here. 1 cubed is 1, plus 7 times 1 squared is 7, so 1 plus 7 minus 36 is 8 minus 36, which is negative 28. That's not going to work. Okay, so 1's not going to work. And this can be exhausting, actually, if you don't uh, check it well. But most of the problems that are given in your book, etc., are set up pretty nicely. Hopefully this one will be, too, because I don't really want to check up to 36. Uh, check 2. 2 cubed is 8, plus 7 times 2 squared. Uh, 2 squared is 4, times 7 is 28. 28 plus 8 is 36. 36 minus 36 is 0. So 2 actually works. 2 is the real, zero, real positive 0 that we're looking for. It will hit the x-axis at 2. So 2 is a solution. Yay! Okay. 
That's very important because what it allows us to do is not uh, worry so much about this problem anymore, this, this monstrosity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to depress this pollen, I'm going to depress this polynomial, not make it sad, but uh, uh, lower the, the degrees of the polynomial using synthetic division, which was already a topic we discussed besides factoring in order to solve for zeros. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this. Uh, since I know 2 is a solution, I'm going to use synthetic division. And I'm going to take the coefficients of this problem. So the number in front of x is 1. Number in front of 7, 7. There is no x term, but you've got to account for the x term. 0, and then negative 36. Account for the x term that's not there. I mean, you have to write it from lowest degree to highest degree. It wasn't there. Make sure you put it there. So let's use uh, synthetic division. 1, 2 times 1 is 2. That's 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 2 times 18 is 36. Bam! We really did work on this. It's very good now. So instead of x cubed, x squared minus 36, now it becomes x squared plus 9x plus 18 remainder 0. What I did was I successfully depressed the problem using synthetic division. As long as you just uh, look back at that uh, lesson with uh, the solving zeros for synthetic division, it's not too bad. Okay. So what I know now is I'm going to rewrite this polynomial as x squared plus 9x plus 18, but I also figured out the root was 2. How do I rewrite that as a um, polynomial? It's x minus 2. Because, and the students, uh, question the students ask is, well, how, why is it x minus 2? Well, it's very simple. If I was solving for 0 here, the only way I could get 2 is by writing x minus 2. x plus 2 would give me a negative 2 for my 0, so I do the opposite sign. That's pretty much it. So I successfully rewrote this problem, f of x equals x minus 2 uh, times the quantity x squared plus 9x plus 18. So this is actually this, and you can check, you can go ahead and foil it in if you want to. And this turns out to be f of x equals x minus 2 times, we can actually factor x squared plus 9x plus 18. What times what will be 18, but will add up to be 9, 6, and 3. And since this term is positive, and the middle term is positive, it means that they're both positive. Probably should have said that first, actually. So I successfully rewrote this uh, function right here, x cubed plus 7x squared minus 36, as the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x plus 6 times the quantity of x plus 3. You just figured out all your zeros. Set this equal to zero. X minus two is equal to zero. X plus six is equal to zero. X plus three is equal to zero. My answers, my zeros for this graph are two, negative 6 and negative 3. I have one real positive 0, bam. I have two real negative zeros, so it's this one. And it has to add up to 3 because that's the highest degree, so 1 plus 3. So it's got to be 0 imaginary zeros. That's really all there is to it. A um, little difficult. But I was more focused on the theory and explaining that. What I'm going to then do is draw this graph really quickly on my next lesson. Uh, but I'm going to erase most of this stuff. I'll keep this part x minus 2, x plus 6, x plus 3, the zeros that go along with it. Probably erase the rest of it. Show you uh, typically what the graph looks like. And from that point, talk about domain and range of polynomial functions in general. Oh, maximum and, and minimum points to relative and extreme. But, uh, yeah, i got to erase this first in order to have the room. But till then, have a good day. Bye.